Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, in light of all that's going on, I think it's time to post this video. But I'm gonna warn you, this video is in stark contrast to my previous videos and my typical videos. But if we're gonna talk about Silver's potential for providing what my good friend Silver5150 likes to refer to as the Silver lifestyle, then we should also point out that in certain situations, physical Silver will be first vital and life-saving and then restored it. And we'll talk about that a little bit in this video. So there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding how you will use your physical bullion during a barter type situation when there's no more need or no more use for fiat currency. So your silver, all the silver that you put away, gold, whatever precious metals you have for barter will be totally useless. People won't care about your silver for their food because what they have will have to be for them and their loved ones, their family. Uh, they will not be in any mood to trade for hunks of metal. That's just not going to be part of it. When we talk about precious metals in prepping, we're talking about after things are starting to be a little more safe for us to deal with each other on a personal level again, that's the time we're talking about needing your precious metals, needing your silver bullion. Uh, and if we have survived to that point, then we have already, we've already, we already understand the importance of precious metals and how they're gonna be used because eventually society will come back it has to we are social beings we're going to have to socialize to survive uh, we need to come up with a system of barter so that we can accommodate each other However, before any of that is relevant, we have to survive the initial storm. And in order to do that, you need to be prepared. So what I've done is I've just put together a series of scenarios based on some of the information that I have, some of the knowledge that I have. I encourage you to fact check what I say. Some of the conclusions that I come to, you can easily research those and come up with your own conclusions. The point I'm trying to make in this part of the video is these things could happen. They have happened in the past, there are plenty of examples of that, and it could happen in the future. So you don't wanna be stuck, not prepared for whatever scenario may be over the horizon. Okay, so we all remember Katrina. You definitely witnessed what was going on on the television when we saw the images and the harshness of the conditions that people had to endure until help arrived. Okay, so just imagine that. That is the scenario I will be discussing hypothetically um, in this video, but only on a much larger scale, nationally, if not global scale, and for a much longer period with there being no structured end in sight. I think it's important to talk about that to kind of give you guys an idea of why I think it's important to stack both kinds of silver, 90% silver, but I believe that 3 nines fine silver has a specific part to play in a situation or scenario like that that goes beyond 90% silver, and we'll discuss that later on in the video. But I promise you that ending is going to be positive, cautionary, but positive. So uh, just stick with me. Grocery stores are gonna gonna run out of supplies within hours. We've seen that when you know natural disasters or any kind of um, catastrophe is looming, supplies run out, completely gone. In a matter of hours, there's a run on the grocery stores and and places where people get supplies, they're gone. Pharmacies within days. Any kind of medicine that you're gonna need, especially people who are diabetic, 
who need insulin and those kind of things, life-saving medications that have to be taken on a regular basis are going to be in trouble unless they are fully supplied and have a ways to continue to supply themselves with life-saving medicine. Okay, hospitals are going to try to accommodate as many patients as they can, but eventually those supplies are going to run out. And staff is going to be in short supply. People are going to have their own needs, their own families to think about. So staff is going to be in short supply. Utilities, that's a big one. And I think that's one that a lot of people don't take into consideration when they think about prepping and getting themselves ready for a breakdown of societal collapse. Utilities are going to be non-existent. Electricity will probably be gone within 30 to 60 days. There will be no electricity. There'll be no running water. There'll be no gas. There won't be anybody picking up the garbage and garbage is gonna accumulate just like any other time. Right? There'll be nobody to pick that up, so that's gonna sit. We know what happened when there's unsanitary conditions on a mass scale. That's when disease and those kind of things set in. There's gonna be no sewage. If there's no running water, your toilets are not gonna work. So what are you gonna do with solid waste? Public safety is the next thing to go. You know, cops got better things to do with protecting their own families and their own livelihood than to try to uh, deal with civil unrest, which will be on a massive scale. That's gonna escalate. There'll be no law and order. People are going to be trying to obtain the supplies that they need by any means necessary. It's going to be every person for themselves. It has to be. Society will stop being civil. Little groups will start and people will start to try to find the survival that they need. So you need to think about that as you're preparing and prepping. There's going to be just too many services that we have come to depend on that will just not be there. People won't have the, the drugs they need to survive. They won't have the food they need to survive. Uh, when disease sets in, which it will because of unsanitary conditions, they won't have the medicine to survive. Big urban centers uh, in the middle of cities, those kind of things, that's going to be the worst. So if you're not out into rural areas or best out into the country, out into nature, and most importantly, if you don't know how to survive during those times, then you're going to seriously be in trouble. All right, so will any of this happen anytime soon? Well, chances are it will not. In fact, I'm betting that it will not happen in my lifetime. But for many of you watching this, you've already thought about a lot of these scenarios already, and you are as prepared as you can be to face them. Like I said, your precious metals won't do you much good during and immediately after a social breakdown event. You'll have to rely on your preparation for that. But here's how I think your precious metals could play a part in you thriving when things start to return to a normal social environment. There will be a definite distinction between your three nines fine silver, your constitutional silver, and your premium silver, your eagles and those kind of things. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that is and how those are gonna be used. So look, just stick with me just a little bit longer. Things are gonna get better. And I'm gonna show you guys something that you probably didn't think of when it comes to your precious metals. But this is where your three nines fine comes in. The 90% silver we use to survive, to get the things we need to survive. That's trade, that's barter that we're using to, um, to kind of deal with each other. But our three nines and gold that we've put away 
is how we maintain our wealth. This is how we rebuild society. This is how we start again. But that's what your three nines is for. So you're protecting your wealth with your 90% silver. Junk silver, constitutional silver, however you want to look at it, 90% silver, it's already ready-made, it's already recognized. It's, we're already geared to accept that type of coinage as trade. And so that's what we'll use. You know, that is going to be key in surviving and the person with the most put away. The person who has prepped the most with supplies and of course, uh, precious metals are gonna be the ones who not only survive, but thrive when we rebuild society. At least that's how we look at it. Now keep in mind, all of this is just hypothetical. Um, I totally plan to have my, <laughs> my silver and all the other provisions that I've put aside for survival to outlast me. I, I totally plan on leaving that to the next generation behind me because I think I will outlive that. I don't think that society is going to come to that while I'm still alive. But I do absolutely believe at some point we are going to come to that. As we look around the world and we see what other countries are going through and the disasters that they're facing, would you be prepared with what you have now? Have you prepared for something like that should that occur? Right? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about how you would survive if we are faced with such a catastrophe in this country, which is a very real possibility as you look around the world and you listen to what's going on around you. Okay, so how is constitutional silver um, ready-made for that, like we like to say? Well, I believe it is um, it's fractional for one thing. It's already made fractional. In other words, you don't have to melt anything down or cut anything up. It's already fractional. So dollars, halves, quarters, dimes, and nickels. I mean, you already have all these things are precious metals. They're already made, ready to go. And I think we all are thinking about what society could be or what society could eventually become. And we don't know what that's going to look like. Maybe nothing, maybe life won't change one bit, but what if it does? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you thought about it? You know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about you know, silver bullion uh, during a total economic collapse or societal collapse. And the, the, a lot of the misconceptions is that we as stackers only stack precious metal. We don't prep any other way. I hear it all the time. I'm sure you guys have too. Well, you can't eat your silver. You're absolutely right. We can't eat our silver. That's why we prep things that we can eat. <laughs> the whole idea behind a person smart enough to prepare for their financial future would totally overlook their, you know, other needs. <laughs> it's just, you know, hard for me to understand why somebody would think that. I don't want to scare anybody. These are possible scenarios, but I think given what's going on around the world today, it's relevant and I think it's important to think about these things. You know, preparing for the future is life. You, know, you don't want to be taken by surprise by anything. Now, being taken by surprise may still happen, but you want to eliminate as many surprises as you possibly can and you do that by preparing. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate the love you guys show me. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. Ring that bell. You can notify as soon as I put out another video. You know, let's look out for each other. Keep stacking. Peace.